The short leg splint is used to immobilize the distal tibia, ankle, and foot. This radiograph demonstrates a displaced fracture of the tibia and fibula. Place the patient prone on the stretcher with the knee and ankle flexed to 90 degrees so that the lower leg is perpendicular to the plane of the floor. Use a piece of four or six inch Webrill to measure the required length of the splint. Measure from the proximal posterior leg down around the ankle and then to the level of the metatarsal heads. Lay this piece of Webrill onto the bed and then roll out an additional three layers to form the cast padding. Use two pieces of Webrill to make the top layer, each offset from the previous layers by 50%. Next, roll out 12 to 15 layers of 4 or 6 inch plaster on top of the Webrill. The plaster may be folded back and forth upon itself during this process. Several rolls of plaster may be required for the short leg splint. Soak the plaster in room temperature water until fully saturated. Raise the plaster from the bucket and remove the excess water by allowing the layers to gently fold on themselves and then gently squeezing them. Lay the plaster down onto the cast padding and smooth it over with your hands. Fold the overhanging edges of the top layer of Webrill over the plaster to form a single outer layer that will prevent the plaster from sticking to the elastic bandage. Apply the splint along the posterior aspect of the lower leg. Use four or six inch elastic wrap to secure the splint to the patient. Begin distally at the toes and progress proximally up the leg. Take special care not to create large wrinkles or creases in the plaster in the heel region. Overlap each pass of the elastic bandage by 50% applying a moderate amount of tension as you progress. Gently mold the splint to the patient's leg. It is important to splint the ankle at 90 degrees of flexion. If additional support is required, as in the case of a displaced ankle fracture that has been reduced in a closed fashion, a lower leg sugar tong splint may be applied in addition to the short leg splint. To apply the sugar tongue, first measure from the medial portion of the lower leg around the foot to the lateral side distal to the fibular head. Prepare the cast padding and plaster as described above, again using about 12 layers of 4 or 6 inch plaster. Apply the splint in a stirrup fashion around the ankle and secure it to the leg using elastic bandage applied in a distal to proximal fashion. Once the splint has been applied, repeat a detailed neurovascular examination of the foot.